Ebro in the morning on Hot 97. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ebro in the morning. And Laura, I was hanging out the other day playing mm -hmm. basketball, and a guy comes up to me, positive energy, and he said, Hey, I do this thing, blah, blah. blah. I said, I know you. You're popping on the internet. I've seen you before. It was Cold Game Kel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> AKA, Yay. AKA. Captain brother, of the Deer Gang. Brother Nature. Brother Nature. I love that. Appreciate y'all having me, man. Ric Flair's the nature boy. You're the nature bro. You nature know what I'm bro. saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for people who don't know, on Instagram, you're Cold Game Kelb, correct? Correct. And tell everyone what you what you do. I know a lot of people watching are familiar, but tell the other people. Well, normally I just make videos feeding deer in my backyard. I give them names and they eat delicious every day. But, Wait, but how did this start though? Is like it's you live where? I live in uh, East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Okay, okay you go to okay. school there? Yep, I and, go to e and ESU. You're and you and you're from Pennsylvania? No, I'm not from Pennsylvania. Where are you from? Uh, I grew up for like nine years in Puerto Rico, but okay. I kept flying back uh, every summer, every winter to over here, uptown. Uptown, like up the Heights? Yeah. Okay. Heights. I stay right there in Dykeman. And you go to school in Pennsylvania, and when you first got there. Was it was it foreign to you to see the deer around everywhere? Nah, because my dad, after my dad moved from Dykeman, he moved to the Poconos. So ah. I used to visit him in the Poconos like every summer, every winter. And okay. I, I would see the deer and I, I would always be like, oh, man, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? I wish they could come up to me someday. And last summer, I ended up, I graduated high school in Texas. I moved to PA and I was just chilling with my cousin here, Ken Polo, and we we're just playing the game. We walk out of his house and I see a deer in his back, um, not in his front yard. And okay. I'm like, yo, bro, you got a deer right here. He's like, yeah, we be feeding her now and then. I'm like, word, that's what's up. So I just put him on Snapchat. I'm like, yo, look, Ken got a, Ken got a pet deer. So I, I leave his house and I go to, I go to my house like three minutes away. I, I pull into my driveway and I see a deer in my backyard and it's a buck. He got big antlers. I'm like, yo, Ken got a deer. I'm going to get a deer too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love this. Yeah. So I, I, I run in my house real quick. I grab some apples, some crackers, and like a loaf of bread. I go to the back. I walk slowly. I look at him. I roll him the apple at first because I want to respect his space. And like once he took out a, a bite out of that apple, he started like licking his nose and he looked happy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, this oh dude, God, this dude what? really rocking with me. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, <laughs> let's get it. So I just threw the crackers on the ground. Like the first thing I was like, <clears throat> I'm going to give him a name real quick. And the first thing I named him was money because like that was just, that's just what was on my mind that summer, you know what I'm saying? I was just trying to run it up. Money. Yeah, so money came up to me. I made a video just showing them off. I'm like, yeah, I'm out here with my pet deer, Money. We play basketball when we were bored outside. It's just lit, man. Like, we love the woods. And I was just talking my talk. I didn't think it was going to go viral or anything. And so how did it How did it progress? Like, how did had the process of it going viral? I'm always interested in how mm -hmm. that happens. How did that play out? So I made... I made that first video. Then the next day, I made another one because I saw I saw another deer. Then the third day, his whole family came. Yeah, because that's the one I saw yeah. first. When I was he like, "Wait, the family over. Yeah. yeah, he called the family over. It was like it, I woke up one day. It's literally it was like a movie. It was like I woke up, I looked outside of my window, and I seen a family of deer coming outside. Money wasn't even there. I was just like, that got to be his family. He had to have spread the message to everybody. He had to let everybody know to come through. Like this dude got the goods. So I just went outside. I assumed it was his family. And you laced them. I laced them with some strawberries, something something nice and delicious and tasty. But for you me. got you got so brave because after a while they started eating right out of your hand. Yeah, that's what I wanted them to do from the jump. Like I I wanted a hand feed. Right, right, right. But was the family open to it though? Did they just because because I feel like they would they might have been a little hesitant at the beginning. Yeah. Um. First it was money. Then the baby moms ate out of my hand. Okay. Baby moms then, came through. Yeah. And then like. As months progressed, like the little baby started eating out my hand, and, then, Ooh, and now and, and is it always this? Is it is is that who's always around? It's it's his family for sure. It's money. Uh, no, nah, now it's now it's different. All types of deer just come through my house. Sometimes it just be little random ones. I don't even bother naming them because I know I'm not. I, you may not see I him might again. not see him again. So how many are there that you know? Like you were like, oh, that's fam. That's that's you know that's Cuzzo. That's Kiko. Uh, that's the little duns. You know how do you, who do you, how do you know? How I, many do you know? I know I'm just gonna name them off. Yeah, the give rip, us the shout out. You shout them out because they may be watching this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know Money, I know Canela, I know Money Jr., Lil Bambi, Lil Nico, Lil Rico, Tequila. Did I already say Canela? I yeah, said Canela, yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, 
Christina, Christina. and Lil Tay Tay. And Tay Tay. Are they all related, those ones, or no? Some of those are not in the family. One more, Lola. But I think Lil Nico, Lil Rico, Tay Tay, and Christina, they're not part of the original deer squad. Okay, Got they're not original it. deer squad. Uh -huh. But then I've seen you venture off to, to other animals. Yes. What I've, other animals are you into? Um, I like. I really like little goats, but I like to dance with them. Like I like oh to grab the God. little goats and just like hold them like little I babies. Can't, little babies. Where do you find little goats? Um, the first time I met a little goat was in California. I had some work uh, with this company called Super Deluxe, and they had me at uh, Animal Ranch, and they had me with like a wolf, an owl, a hawk, llamas, goats, kangaroos. They had me with like all types of animals. So real, real quick, because this is important. How old are you? Eighteen. You're 18. Yes. So as a result of you making a video where you're just being creative and talking to the Deer Squad, you've built such a following. You have like, what, 600,000 followers, something on mm -hmm. social, that now people just reach out to you and offer you opportunities to work with animals because they know that you're able to reach a lot of people. Yes. So you're able to directly do like what you exactly what you want to do. Exactly. And it was like right before I graduated, I had a meeting with my – um with the whole school board because I was uh, had an interview for a scholarship because I wrote an essay and they were like, hey, we want to bring you in to see if you can win this scholarship. And one of the questions, that was the last question out of the interview, and they were like, if you could do one thing with your life after you're done with everything, like, what would you do? And then I was like, I, th I thought about it for a second, and I was just like, I will go to Australia, just be in the jungle and look at the wildlife just to see what life is like outside of just being a human. Just because it's real life there, you know what I'm saying? It's not just being human. It's a whole world out there. There's real life, and I would just want to experience that. And it's just crazy that that deer was in my back, in my backyard that day. And ever since then, like everything's just changed. You know what I'm saying? Like I got that platform. I've been able to help people. Like the most important thing that I like out of all of this is the foundation that I created, the Everybody Eats Foundation. So, so when did you start this foundation, Everybody Eats? I started the Everybody Eats Foundation October. October I started it just so we can. Uh, so we can get the mission going by November for Thanksgiving. Okay, so, so can you break down the mission? Of course. The mission is we want to help families that are in need during holidays and and kids also. Okay. So like I want to but I want to do it different every single time. I want to do it like in a in a unique way. So last um last Thanksgiving I came up with I was like, so what can I do to help my community? So I went to uh the food pantry with, with a piece of paper, and I asked the people as they, as they were getting their food, like, hey, would you be able to afford a Thanksgiving meal this this Thanksgiving? And the people that said no, I took their name down, wrote their address, and then I made a little promo video telling people, like, hey, you can go to my website, donate some money so we can feed these families during Thanksgiving. Oh, I love and, that. Yeah, it, it was so dope. So I got I got a lot of, um, so a lot of people donated, a lot of my followers, like, they, they were all supporting this, so shout out to my followers. Do you know how much money you were able to raise? Uh, ten thousand dollars. Wow. wow, tremendous! Yeah, I was I was able to raise ten thousand dollars, and I donated over a hundred fifty turkeys to all the churches around. And then I was able to uh, donate to at least forty homes or Thanksgiving meals three days before Thanksgiving, so they could cook it and have yeah. you know what I'm saying go through That's the whole amazing. experience. Yeah, and then well, we all how did you how did you find this sort of sense of purpose at such a young age? I mean, usually this is a time in life when people are just trying to figure out. They don't have any idea what they're going to be interested in. And kids in. can be extra selfish. Like you just want to spend money on Jordans. Or, you right. know what I mean? Yeah. It, it was like I, I got to owe it a lot to like my high school and like what I went through in high school because it wasn't always like the easiest time coming up. But I got past it and I was like really happy at the end of high school. And I was also always in classes that required me to do community service. Like in this class called AVID, which is a college readiness class that we got to have 40 hours of community service by every year. You okay. know what I'm saying? So it was always a part of my life. And one thing that we always did as a class was go to, um, on Thanksgiving, go to a church that morning and serve people the food. So I realized that's what really made me happy. And I could show anybody that giving back, you could just do it. You don't, it's not, it doesn't take that much out of you. You can just get out there and just do it. And it just makes me feel good. So how do your friends and family feel about all of this that you're doing? They're all, they're all really happy. And they all think it's crazy. Like, Yo, bro, you left Texas and you just blew up. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> Off some deer in your backyard. But I'm like, I don't know, bro. Like, everything just happens for a it reason. Is, but... It is. It, see, see, so often, Calvin, I'm like annoyed, as Laura can attest to. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm always annoyed by people who get popping for like random reasons. Mm -hmm. I'm like, the internet's so stupid. Like, who cares? 
this is such a rare example of like it happening and I think it's such dope use of the internet. Like of your natural spirit of who you are touched people, it they related to it, the idea of the animals, it all comes together and then you make it about feeding people. It's such a it's such a really cool story. Um so what other what other goals do you have on the horizon? that you'd like to do? I mean, obviously, so it's summertime now. You're yeah. out of school, mm -hmm. so you have a summer. What's your plans for the summer? What are you trying to work on? Tell us about that. Well, summertime, I'm trying to get new merch popping because, you know, people need clothes, definitely. Uh, and that's where you can do something that, that where you can make some money. Definitely. Is the merch. So, yep. Because that, that Deer Gang shirt's kind of tight. The yep. Deer Squad. Appreciate it, bro. Is that money? Yeah, this money right here. <laughs> the OG. Yeah, he this money the OG right, right here. He got the money. He got the money in his mouth. The money on the top of his head because that's just how he feeling. But um, that's so good. <laughs> so wait, so you're gonna do more merch this summer? Yeah, I want to do more merch this summer. I also want to get like meet and greets popping. I want to, I, I want to meet the people that support me. Like I really do. I want to get out there and just actually meet them because people see me all the time in the streets. Like, oh, you're the everybody's guy. Your videos make me so happy. And I just think it's so crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm just making these videos, just fooling around. But, um, and I also, um, uh, I want to do things where like, I want to, I want to feed people, but like on a certain day, but like half people come with me and feed them too. Okay. So I'm thinking so of- maybe you can invite some of your followers yeah, to come Yeah, home. I want to invite my followers. So I want to set that up. I want to shout out to Deanna for the hashtag lunch bag. Cause that really like encouraged, encouraged me to- Hashtag lunch bag? Mm-hmm. Hashtag lunch bag. And every, what does that mean? Hashtag lunch bag. They come out uh, every Sunday. Okay. Where, where is it at, Deanna? Oh wow, Union Sidebar Square. Sidebar in Union Square. Sidebar Union Square. Every every last Sunday of the month, we feed about nine hundred people. We all make sandwiches, put them in like little bags. They get cookies, water, and we all go out and just feed the homeless. And it's I dope. love that hashtag yeah. lunch bag. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That is a that is a really really uh, cool thing that you're doing. Um, also, do you think that like one thing I've been thinking about recently because I know there've been articles about it. It seems like you were so positively impacted by getting to be in a part of the world where you see nature a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think a lot of people who live in the hood aren't exposed to anything except concrete. And I think a lot of people's lives are changed. Like my dad was telling me about an article that he read about these kids from Compton that they took off, uh, there's a program that takes them to like a farm and these kids were like given horses to adopt and they started caring for the horses and it utterly changed the kids' lives yeah. just to get to interact mm -hmm. with animals. And it's something that you kind of take for granted. Like if you're a rich kid, like maybe you learn horseback riding mm -hmm. as a kid and right, maybe right, you right. go, maybe you have dogs and maybe you get to go do this and... When you're when you don't have any of that, I just think the way you view the world is totally different. Yeah, because you don't have access to any of that. Yeah, and 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 um, so you don't even really know what you're missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then when you that like that first experience you had when you connected with an animal, yeah, uh, is, is that had to be really changing for you? Like it seems like that is sort of what sparked everything for you. Yeah, it, it definitely. And a lot of the the videos were influenced by like just when I walk my dog because I w I used to just walk my dog and talk to him and put him on Snapchat and people always like laugh at like the way I used to talk talk to my dog, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm like, yo, Max, like what's up, bro? Like hurry up. Like you're taking too long to pee and stuff. But it's it's like my relationship with my dog, like I knew I love my dog. You know what I'm saying? Like I hate it when my parents put him in the bathroom. Like I'm like, nah, like let him be free. So I just it's like dealing with the animals does change your view because you you get a different perspective of how people view things. You know what I'm saying? Or how the animals feel. And it just makes you like very open minded. What kind of dog do you have? English bulldog. How does I mean he, not not English American bulldog? How does he deal with the deer? What are his thoughts on the deer? Uh, when he was younger, he used to just chase him all the time until he got kicked a couple of times. But like oh he still God. he still try to he still try to bite at them. But my dad be like, "Yo, come back!" And once he got kicked twice really hard, like. He stopped Aww. messing with them, and now he's a little old, so now he doesn't even bother. Like he can't even catch up to him no more. He's so. like, whatever, deer. So honestly, like now I walk my dog, and the deer just be around, like nothing. Like he yeah. doesn't even he doesn't notice. He doesn't care. Nah, he doesn't care. Like he he doesn't even have a choice. He can't even chase after him no more. This, so now he just be chilling. The funniest thing is, uh, my dog Bear is scared of dogs. Mm -hmm. Like he's scared of almost. Here's Bear's breakdown of animals: terrified of dogs. No interest or notice of squirrels or birds, and mm -hmm. no doesn't register. Like they walk right by, he doesn't care. 
And then deer, when we go to my, my in-law's house, there could be 30 bucks outside that are the biggest thing ever. Bear will take off and chase every last one of them away. Oh, my wow. God. Which is crazy because he's scared of a toy poodle. Like, he will bark at a toy poodle and be terrified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he yeah. will chase those deer. It, I just find it fascinating the way animals look at other animals. Right, what, right, yeah. right. Or whatever they sense, whatever scent or, or hormones I, are, are I, out there. Pheromones. I think it has to do with, like, their hierarchy or what kind of animals they are. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, I have a Pomeranian, you know, the, the mm -hmm. little fluffy ones? Mm -hmm. And he's 10, peewee, and he just growls and barks at every animal, no matter how big he yeah. is. He tries to be a tough guy with everyone. Hey, but have you seen peewee around deer? No. It'd be interesting to see. He hates everyone equally. He does seem like <laughs> yeah. that. He, he, treated me, he treated me like that as well. So, um, Kelv, if people want to follow you and find out about the work that you're doing, um, uh, what's the best way for people to find you? Um, you can find me at Cold Game Kelv on Instagram. That's the same for the Twitter handle. Everybody's foundation.org if you want to go check out the foundation. And yeah. But I want to loop back to what you were saying about the uh, about the kids that are just surrounded by concrete. And yep. you know how, yes. So the other day... We went downtown to um, feed some people uh, pizza. Like, we got, like, probably, like, 20 pizza boxes. We went downtown, and I brought one of my homies from the hood. You know what I'm saying? And you should have just seen how he was acting, because usually he's, like, mad, reckless, and this and this and that. That's what he's known now. Mm -hmm. like, I don't mean to put him down, but, like, a lot of people, like, talk down on him or whatever. But while he was feeding these people, like, he was act he was just acting like he had all the manners you never think he had. He's like, <laughs> sir... Sir, would you like some pizza? We feeding everybody. <laughs> and you should have just seen how he was acting. You know what I'm saying? It like, changed it, him. It changed him. Like, you see that part out of him that nobody's ever seen before. And I, But I, when I look at people, I don't ever, like, look at the bad things they go through. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I, I treat everybody equally unless you're, like, really a super messed up person. But I know he's not a messed up person. It's right, just, right. You know no there was guidance. good there. He just yeah, didn't have guidance, right. He doesn't have the guidance. So when we were out here feeding the people, like, you should have just seen him. Like, e even though he, the things he was doing was kind of rude, but he was still trying to be nice about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's people homeless sleeping, and he's like, he's excuse like, me, sir, excuse sir. me, sir, <laughs> sir. Trying to wake up. I'm like, yo, bro, don't, don't wake He's resting right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, chill. But, but you it, know it was with good intention. Yeah, it was, it yeah. was with good intention. So that's, that's what's so cool well, and, about and, giving and, back. And, and I guess giving back, it's an addictive thing. Like, once you you see how it affects people positively, and yeah. all of a sudden they want to do more and that's the domino effect of how uh, people start becoming really good people mm -hmm. what you're doing is awesome man we're that's happy great. really happy it that is. you came by we enjoyed this if we can be involved in any way you have my number now so just let us know 100% cold game Kel feed Yay. everybody thank you man